What is up fellow summoners? Welcome back to the channel today for the second part on our first look series of the two new characters that are dropping here uh, very shortly. We did Punisher last night. I did the review, posted it this morning, and uh, now we're going to take a look at Carnage. And I apologize, and I should like, I don't know, give you a gift or something if you actually managed to make it all the way through that Punisher video. I realized after I got done, I, it was a really long video, I'm sorry. There was a lot to cover, and uh, I had a lot to say. Sometimes I ramble on, so... Hopefully I can cut this one down, get all my thoughts in a little bit more concise and get it in under 15 minutes. So props to you if you actually watch that video. So on to Carnage. My, uh, kind of my initial knee-jerk reaction when I saw him was that I think he looks really cool, but I was expecting to see him as a little bit bigger character model. Um, I think from the front he looks okay, but let me play it here. From the... Oh, I just missed it there. Let me go back a little bit. From... Uh, I'm screwing this all up here. From that, from from that perspective right there, so we're, we're gonna kind of see him from that direction when you're playing him. I think he looks kind of funky. Um, he's got like a Lord of the Rings Hobbit foot kind of thing going on with his giant feet. I don't know. He just looks kind of clunky. Like his hands, his his upper half looks fine, but there's something about that lower half of him that just looks odd and misplaced. I, I kind of wish that he would have been a bigger character. I love the way that the the Venom. Uh, suit kind of I, I don't know what you want to call it, but there's like animation where it's kind of swirling around his body I think it's really cool a Again, I guess it's just personal preference I would have expected and would have preferred to see him as a little bit bigger not like the size of Venom uh, But maybe something bigger along the size and maybe like an Ultron or something like that But uh, all personal preference, but uh, that's kind of the first thing that came to mind. So let me play this through here We'll get to the percentages for his attributes. Won't spend really any time here. You can see his attribute levels are really, really low. The reason for that is obviously because of all the buffs that he is gaining. Uh, by the time you stack all of those up, that's when he's going to be really strong. So you've got to start him at a little bit lower rate as far as percentages go on his attributes, and that's the reason for that. All right, let's move this thing forward. Let's click over to his synergy, synergy, synergy abilities. And the synergies, um, I thought I thought maybe that we were going to see something unique like we saw with Punisher, uh, but this has kind of gone back to the original synergies, the classic synergies, whatever you want to call them, um, you know, that we see with everybody else, how it affects everybody across the board. The only unique one he's got here is with Venom, where he gains uh, one, uh, gain plus one to his maximum number of genetic memories or mutation buffs. The problem with that is I don't really see... Where you would ever be want, where you would ever want to run Carnage and Venom at the same time, Carnage feels like a better version of Venom, uh, and if you're bringing him in for damage, you would probably want to pair him up with somebody who's got some regen or some sort of utility power drain. Um, so having two of the almost exact same characters feels a little clunky to me. But for special events, for questing, I don't know, it might be kind of fun to pair him up and just play around with a little bit. But for everyday use. In AQ and AW, I don't really see a lot, uh, a lot of benefit to that synergy. Everything else, attack, crit, health, that's all kind of classic what we've seen before. All right, let's get through the bio here and over into his signature ability to start with. Bloodlust is very similar to Venom. If you've played Venom at all, you know when you have the enemy bleeding, he gains increase to his critical damage. Same thing here when the enemy is bleeding, except that he's going to gain an increase to his power gain. Which at first, I was a little bit confused by this. Um, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about it here. I'll wait till we kind of get through the rest of the uh, rest of the abilities because I think it ties uh, it ties into his rotation. But uh, it, it is a large power gain. I mean, if you take a look at that 30%, and I realize he is a fully maxed out level 200 character. I don't know the first time you awaken him what that percentage is going to be. I would expect it's probably somewhere around, oh, I would say 19 to 21%-ish, somewhere right around there. But if you compare that to like a power gain synergy team that we run, typically that's between like 20 and 22%. So built in, if he's awakened, he's almost got, like you could imagine he's got an entire power gain team kind of built into him, which is really cool. But uh, anyway, I'll, I'll come back to that here in just a second. All right, so let's go ahead and play this thing. Let's get down into his passives. Passives are pretty cool. Uh, you're gonna gain a buff every time you, you do something specific. So when you get hit, you gain a physical resistance buff. When you block, light attack, medium attack, heavy attack. So essentially what you're trying to do is, I guess, jam as many of these things as you can into one combo. And then you can, um, you can make these a permanent buff by using a special attack. So each time right there, each time Carnage activates a special attack, he begins to mutate for 10 seconds. Once his mutation ends, he copies current symbiotic creations as a permanent buff. 
So if the fight starts and you parry block, you're going to gain the block proficiency buff. You start the you start the five hit combo with a medium attack, then do your light attack. So at the end of that five hit combo, you'll have a block proficiency buff, critical rate buff, and an attack buff. Now from that point moving forward, you can either decide, you know, do I want to go ahead and push myself into a special and make this a permanent buff, so I can then start to stack on top of that, or do I maybe want to wait and try to do a heavy attack to gain a crit buff? Um, you know, with with the increase to the power gain. Um, you just got to think like when you have a power gain synergy team at 20% it takes about like six seven hits somewhere around there to gain a bar of power So essentially almost after every five hit combo you're gonna be really really close um, To having one bar of power. So this uh, Mutation is going to be happening co happening constantly because you're almost always gonna have a special attack one and two sitting there ready for you so I don't know, it's gonna take a little bit of ramp up time to be able to do this because every single time that you try to mutate, it's gonna take 10 seconds, which if you're talking about a regular Alliance war fight, you know, typically you don't go the full three minutes. I would say most fights are done within kind of a minute and a half time period, two minutes uh, at the very most is, is typically when most of those fights are done. So if you're mutating, you know, maybe once every, I don't know, you're not gonna have the mutation up all the time. You're probably only gonna be able to mutate I'd say maybe five times, about a minute, yeah. I mean, five, six times at the max. So really, you know, there's only a, a small percentage of the fight that you're actually gonna be like totally buffed up um, and, and doing kind of max damage, which is a little bit concerning to me. But again, we'll kind of have to wait and see uh, once this all plays out. Uh, once these mutation, oh, I, sorry about that. I skipped ahead <laughs> to the next video and to come back. Uh, okay, so once his um, his mutation ends after 10 seconds, all of those buffs that you had uh, received by doing the light attacks and medium and so forth, um, you know, once you were sufficient, had those, used your special after 10 seconds, those become permanent buffs, then allow you again to, to block, uh, light attack, medium attack, heavy attack, gain all those buffs again, and repeat the cycle with your next special attack. Now, uh, critical hits, which this is pretty interesting, your critical hits, have an 80% chance to bleed, dealing a small amount of damage over half of a second. Um, this actually reminded me, the first time I read this, of Beast, when he's in his, uh, his, his damage freestyle form. It's the one that you start to fight out in when you have above 50% health. But when you do the combo, every time you hit, uh, there's like this additional damage that just like ticks off. And because this bleed is so short, it's not gonna really feel like a normal bleed. Uh, every time you crit, you're gonna see the crit damage, and then there's just gonna be this little tick of damage. Which, this doesn't seem really strong until you consider the fact that once you have got several crit buffs built up, um, you're probably gonna be critting, you know, like three or four out of every five hit combo. Um, so it, it's just kind of an extra little amount of damage that's tacked on to the end of almost every single crit that you're doing. So. Uh, it's not kind of a normal bleed, how, how we normally see them tick away over a, an extended amount of time. But again, I think it overall is actually a, a pretty decent amount of damage. Um, especially if you have deep wounds, that is going to extend the amount of time this ticks for. Uh, basically, you're going to double the amount of time that it ticks for if you've got deep wounds maxed out. But uh, I don't know. I think it's very interesting. Again, it reminds me very much of uh, that extra damage that uh, Beast does. Heavy attacks uh, cause a bleed. Now, there's two ways that you can cause a bleed. Um, and excuse me, the critical hits, they, they only will cause that bleed if the target is already bleeding. So that's that's very important to keep in mind. So the only two ways right now that you can get the character to bleed is with a heavy attack. They will um, they'll bleed. There's a 100% chance to bleed there for 10 seconds. And then if you use an S3, um, there's a 100% chance to get a bleed for 20 seconds. So the thing to remember here though, is that with the power gain, so I'm gonna go right back up here, let me go back up to the Awaken ability. Go back, 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 back. I sound like Berman, okay, there it is. So this, this power gain is gonna mean that pretty much every, I would say, less than 15 hits, um, you're gonna be at an S3, so you're gonna be able to continually stack this S3 kind of over and over again if you need to. I think you'll actually get to the point in your power gain, um, and the longer, I, I, should, I should go back to this, the longer the opponent is continuously bleeding, the greater the bonus up to 20 seconds, so the, the greater the power gain bonus. So what this means 
is that once you start stacking the S3, if you want to reapply the bleed with a heavy attack, the longer the bleed goes, the more power gain you're going to receive. I believe that is how it's reading. So what is going to happen eventually is you're to the point where you're gaining so much power that the way, and just from looking at a special attacks, the way I think it's going to be played out, let me find it here, is that probably every like six hits or so, you're going to be gaining a bar of power. You're almost to the point where after every five hit combo just about, you're going to be able to use a special attack one, which if you look at the S1 and the S2, it's nothing more than just a power dump. Um, it's a way to add some additional crit um, or an additional damage to the end of your combo and you're going to be spamming this thing constantly when you don't need a bleed up. I, I, I kind of like the way that this is set up, um, you know, using the special attacks as more of like part of your normal rotation. It's going to feel like almost, you know, this character does a six hit combo is what it's going to feel like almost because by the time you do a five hit combo with all that power gain, you're going to be almost at a special every single time. So. I think it's a really kind of I think it's a cool take because he is so similar to Venom in one sense but in another he's a very different character all to himself now the part that I'm not so sure of and I had kind of mentioned it before is I'm because it's gonna take a little bit of time to ramp this up and he doesn't have any form of power control um, he doesn't have any sort of heal unfortunately I was really hoping that we were gonna get a heal with this character um, you know, when, when you have characters that don't reliably heal like that, they, they tend to get kind of thrown to the back of the pile and don't get used a whole lot. So I was really hoping that we were going to see some form of a region, um, but unfortunately not. When I was kind of looking at the landscape of characters um, that I could compare him to, I, I think he reminds me a little bit, obviously, of Venom, but uh, more recently of Angela, who came to the contest. Uh, she hits really, really hard, but it takes a little bit of time uh, to kind of line up all of her fury buffs. So this, I don't know. I'm, I'm excited to see Carnage come. I, I think that what I was hoping to see with the character, and again, we haven't actually seen the gameplay, but just from reading through this, I'm not quite as excited about him as I as I was hoping that I would be, um, because we've already got we've already got Venom. You know, so we've already seen something similar to this. You know, you can control this more uh, directly, but we, we've already seen something similar to this, and we just had Angela come out, which relies heavily on the Fury buffs, or uh, relies heavily on all of these buffs that you get to deal your damage, except that in his case, he's also got a little bit of bleed, uh, whereas in Angela's case, she skips the bleed and has a little bit of heal. So those two characters, while they may look very different, I think actually mirror themselves um, even more closely than what um, Carnage and Venom do. Not going to be able to use him in Alliance War right now with Mystic Dispersion. You're just going to get tore to pieces, uh, just like Angela, just like any other character that's got uh, buffs like this. So in that case, do you use him in AQ? You know, probably not. He doesn't have any sort of a regen, especially if you're running map 6. You know, you're going to need somebody who's got a little bit of a regen, or at least, you know, somebody to bring along who's got potential for that. Uh, which leaves him down to, you know, story questing, I guess. Um, maybe just a little bit of a collector character looks cool. I hope not. I hope that I'm totally proven wrong with this one. But while I think that Carnage looks cooler, and I was more excited for him, I think that Punisher is actually going to turn out to be the more useful character of the two. May not be the most fun to play, but I think he's actually going to be more useful of the two of the characters. So... I don't know. I don't really want to sound like I'm down on him. We'll have to wait till we see the gameplay. Hopefully, like I said, he does crazy damage. But uh, I don't know. I, I guess time will tell. Let me know what you guys think. If you're hyped, if you're excited, if you're disappointed, uh, leave that all below. All right, guys. Thanks for uh, spending a little bit of time with me in these first look videos. Hopefully, we'll have some gameplay up later today or hopefully this weekend at some point. All right. Take care. Have a great day. We'll see you later.